the king of Mathland has assigned a task for you. He wants you to shade each district of this map such that two bordering districts don't share the same color. He also adds a clause, the less colors you use, the better. So you set off, trying 7, 6 and 5 colors, which all seem to work, and after a little bit of effort, you finally find a way to color the map with 4 colors. In fact, you realize that you only need 4 colors to shade any map he's given you, no matter its shape, size or complexity. You, my dear friend, have stumbled upon the 4 color theorem, which states that all planar maps can be colored with 4 colors or less. Let's try understanding this a little better. First of all, drawing maps like these are not helpful when solving a mathematical problem. For example, these two maps may look different, but for the sake of proving the theorem, are virtually identical. They both have the same arrangement of colors and same number of regions. Instead, let's represent each district with a colored circle, called a vertex, and borders with connecting lines. So, we can draw both these maps in the same way. The end product is called a planar graph. In mathematics, when you want to prove a theorem, you need to be exhaustive and account for all possible cases. Just because some maps you've drawn can be colored in four colors, doesn't necessarily mean all of them will. So to prove the theorem, you have to show that all possible maps can be colored with four colors or less. But how do you do this? Aren't there infinitely many ways to draw a map? Using some elegant mathematical tools, we can restrict the scope of the problem, making it much easier to solve. Consider Euler's identity, which states that every planar map is bound by the equation v minus e plus f is equal to 2, where v is the number of vertices, e is the number of edges, and f is the number of faces, counting the outside of the graph as a face. First of all, planar graphs with one or two vertices can't have faces. Only graphs with three vertices or more can have a face. So, let's draw an arbitrary graph with more than three vertices. As you can see, for every face on the graph, you have at least 3f edges. But notice that each edge is shared between two faces. So, we can write 3f will always be less than or equal to 2e. To verify this, plug in the number of faces and edges, giving us 15 is less than 16. Now, let's rearrange Euler's formula, taking e on v on the other side and multiplying each side by 3. We can use the inequality earlier, which now gives us e is less than or equal to 3v minus 6. This means there are restrictions on the types of graph we can draw. Take this graph called k5, for example. If we plug in the number of edges and vertices, we get 9 is greater than 10, which is not true. So why is this inequality helpful? Well, it shows us that not every graph you can draw is planar or you can say not a valid map. In fact, this is what mathematicians Kenneth Apple and Wolfgang Haken did in 1976 to prove the four-color theorem. Extending this logic, they reduce the number of possible configurations of planar maps from infinitely many to just 1,936. They then use nearly 1,000 hours of computing time to verify that all these configurations are indeed four-colorable. This was not just a big moment in mathematics because a century-old problem was solved, but also because it was the first proof to be done by the use of a computer. So the next time you look at a map, think about all the wonderful mathematics which is at play. From graph theory to computation, you'll be surprised to find how universal the subject truly is.